Yo, man. This business homework is terrible. This business homework, it doesn't even have given written on it. It has nothing. It is crap. There's no direction, no unit, or anything. Urgh! Yeah! Hey, you. Who, me? Are you still getting beat up at school? Mom? Still can't hand in good physics homework to the kids that are beating you up? Mm-mm. -mm. Well, how to be a physics major is the DVD for you. Hey, Cody! Ah! This DVD comes with your own professional trainers. My name is Cy, for scientists. I'm the future. I'm Coulomb, or you can call me 6.25 times 10 to the 18th elementary charge. Get in. Oh, I'm sorry. Hello, I'm Siegfried and Roy, Ben and Jerry, Manuel Lopez, Theta, Figueroa, to the third. Or you can just call me Siegfried, for short. My name is Bob. The first step to becoming a physics major is to know your SI units. Oh. SI units are the normal units for measure for anything that scientists, like me, use. They are... You have your meter for your length, your kilogram for your mass, your seconds for time, Ampere for electric current, Kelvin for thermodynamic temperature, mole for amount of substance, and candela for luminous intensity. Go ahead, give it a shot. Try converting them. Hmm. Good job, kid. Converting units is so easy. Lesson number two. You have to know how to use scientific notation in order to be a physics major. Imagine the number Google. It is a number that has a hundred zeros. Dang! Ah! The easiest way to write it is to use three zeros. To write it, you take a number like 1 times 10 to the 100 power, which is a Google. You, in order to do the scientific notation, take the first digit and make it the ones place. Dang. That's right. Then, you move the decimal that many places to get to the ones place. If you move it to the right, subtract the number of places from the number zero. If you move it to the left, add the number of places to the number zero. That is your exponent, or the number that is to the right of the ten. Excuse me for one second. <laughs> no! <laughs> Part 3. Significant oh, figures. Yeah. Step 1. All non-zero digits are significant. Step 2. All zeros appearing between two non-zero digits are significant. Step 3. All zero or non-zero digits appearing to the right of a decimal are significant. You following me? Okay. Part 4. All the rest that do not apply are not significant. So I'll give you three examples. Six million. There's no decimal, one significant figure. All right? You have, you have seven, six zeros right here. One, two, three, four, five, six. You're gone. You have one significant figure. Next one. Six million with a decimal. You can't cross them off because they're significant. So you've got seven significant figures. And then your last one, point zero zero six. Since they are to the right of the decimal, they are significant. Therefore, they are three significant figures. Oh my god! Lesson number four, graphical analysis. The independent variable goes on the x-axis, and the dependent variable goes on the y-axis. What's an independent and dependent variable, Bob? I'll tell you. An independent variable is a variable in an experiment that, when changed, can affect the dependent variable. For example, time or speed. And the dependent variable is a variable that is being tested or looked for by altering the independent variable. Aha, uh -huh. so how's this important in my life? It isn't. No disrespect, but physics is a joke. Really? Then what's the whole point of me wanting to become a physics major? I don't know. You purchased the DVD. I don't care. Now go out there and use the skills I told you in the real world.
mass, velocity, speed. Wait, look, it's a bomb. <laughs>